Hey there everyone, Indra here and today I'm going to show you how to add dramatic highlights and shadows to your Photoshop compositions. Many of you have asked me how I add highlights to my artworks and today I'm going to show you exactly how. Please stay till the end of the video because I have a small exercise for you. Now without further ado, let's start lighting things up. Alright, so here we are in our Photoshop with a cool R2D2 composition. I have just made the whole image a bit darker so that the highlights pop up. Well, there are lots of awesome tutorials out there on highlights, but here I'll show you the method that I follow and I hope you'll find it helpful too. Now, there are lots of technicalities with lights and shadows, but I'll keep things very simple so that you can remember them and apply when you are doing your artwork. Firstly, you need to make sure the source of light or the direction of light like is it coming from top, right, bottom, left or even front or back you need to pay attention to that. Next is the cone of the beam like is it a pencil beam or is it a spotlight flooding everything. Then comes the intensity of light like is it soft or is it harsh and finally comes the type of material on which the light is falling like is it a shiny polished metal surface or is it a non-reflective diffusive surface like a cloth. So you have to take all these things in mind when you will be proceeding and this will help you get a more natural result. By the way, I always recommend you go and check out photographs with various lighting conditions that will actually help you to understand how lights and shadows work in real life. I do that very often from time to time and use photographs as reference to my lights and shadows. Okay, so coming back to our composition, we have our subject and the background and I have created a light that is coming from the top right direction. Now I have simply added a brightness and contrast to make everything pop a bit. Here I have also created some light maps to make you understand how the light will shine on our subject. Now you have to keep in mind that this is a 3D object and since this subject, the toy model of R2D2 has a depth to it, the light will reflect and bounce off accordingly. So now let's create our first adjustment layer and start painting the highlights. Well, if you have a pressure sensitive pen tablet, then that's the best way to go. You will get the best results out of it. But I guess most of you don't have a pen tablet and you only have your mouse with you. So I'll be doing it with mouse and I'll show you how you can achieve the best results even with a simple mouse. So if you have a pen tablet, you can set your brush to maybe something like soft round pressure, opacity and flow that will react to the pressure you're applying on your pen tablet. But for mouse, you can do this. You can take the opacity down to around 50% and also take the flow down to around 10%. Now let's create our first adjustment layer. For the highlights, I use this. Create a new adjustment layer and select solid color fill. Now since our light is of an orange shade, our highlights will also have orange color. So I'm taking a shade of orange but take a very dark shade something like this. It's just the brightness reacting to it so I'll just hide it for now. And then we'll change the blending mode to linear dodge. Now over here you need to experiment with maybe linear dodge, color dodge, even screen and you can sometimes also check hard light and see how it's affecting your image and whether you are getting the kind of glow that you are looking for. But in general linear dodge works good. So I'll keep linear dodge selected. I'll select the layer mask and press Ctrl plus I if I'm on Windows and Command plus I if I'm on Mac to invert the layer mask so that everything is now hidden. Now I'll take my brush tool. I have my opacity set to around 50% and I have my flow set to around 10% make sure the foreground color is white and we can start painting. Now once again don't apply all the highlights at once it's just like traditional painting don't put a dab of color at one place you need to build up the color layer by layer with brush strokes. So the same principle kind of applies over here. So I'll quickly check my light map to see where I need to paint so I'll zoom in 
and start with this metallic surface. I'm using the square brackets on my keyboard to control the size of the brush. Like this, you can start painting. And you have already noticed that the light is leaking out into the background that we do not want. So if this is happening, you can do this. You can increase the opacity, change the hardness, increase it and select color black. Set black as your foreground color and paint on the layer mask. It will remove that bleed because you know once you paint with white on layer mask it shows and if you paint with black it hides. But this can be tedious. So if you have your subject separated like I have, I have my subject separated. So what I can do is I can clip my highlights layer to my subject layer. I can simply right click and select create clipping mask. So this will clip that layer to the subject layer and you can see that now the light bleed is gone. So let's start painting. Well, now here is a cool trick that I would recommend you do. That is right click and select blending options. And over here, you need to play a bit with this blend if section. Here, in this underlying slider, drag this black node towards your right and you can see that you are revealing parts of the black areas from the underlying layers. Now this is very choppy, you can smooth things out by holding Alt on your keyboard if you are on Windows or Options if you are on Mac and then drag to split this slider into two and then drag it again to make things smoother. Now what this will do is it will reveal some black details from the underlying layer and why we are doing this because even if light is falling on the surface and it's shining and it's lit up but still it has lots of finer details where light will cast a shadow. So to get those details and make it look a lot realistic you need to apply this trick. I'm selecting OK and I'm continuing with my painting. Well, yes, it can take a lot of time. So the more time you spend and more patient you are, better results you will get. Maybe I'll brighten up the color a bit. And also play with the blend if section to brighten it up. You can press X on your keyboard to switch between the foreground and background color and if your foreground and background colors are set as black and white, you can quickly mask out areas that you have overpainted. So these are protrusions and they will catch the light, so I'm painting them off carefully. Don't worry if the light is not looking that bright, we can always brighten it up afterwards. I have chosen this example specifically because it is not too simple but not too complex also and we can experiment with different shapes over here like this arm here is very sharp so it will kind of have a very sharp highlights over here but if you consider this body area, this is cylindrical in shape so it will catch a lot of light over this region so we can highlight all of this at once it's better you pay attention to each and every detail like this small screw over here the top part should get the highlight, this right part also. So the more details you pay attention to, the more realistic and natural it would look. We should also have a bit of highlights on the part over here, but it won't be that much like we had on the right side. So I'll just add a little bit of rim highlight over here. Okay, so it's more or less done. I'll have this brightness layer enabled just for the sake of the contrast on our 
composition now if you want the highlights brighter you can do this you can simply duplicate this right click and select duplicate layer make sure it's clipped and you can see how bright it is and how good it looks you can always fine tune onto these layers but what I recommend you do is you play with the blending mode of the duplicate layer to see what suits best. Make sure your highlight is not brighter than the source of light. But since we do not have the source of light visible over here and the ambient glow is coming so it's fine for this image. I'll maybe change it to screen and I think it looks better than linear dodge. Now about the surface that I was speaking earlier, since this is a metallic surface, we should have a bloom or a shine. How we can do that? We can again duplicate this one by right clicking and select duplicate layer. I'll hit OK, but before that maybe I'll change it to bloom. And now I'll release the clipping mask. I'll tell you why. I'll right click and select release clipping mask and this is all bleeding out. So what I'll do is I'll just select the layer mask and since my background color is black, I'll press control and delete on my keyboard or if you're on Mac, you can press command and delete to fill it with black. Now what I will do is I'll change its blending mode to screen. It's already screen. So that's fine. I'll again take my brush. The hardness is zero the opacity is 45 flow is 10 everything looks perfect foreground color is white i'll paint a bit over here i want the light to bleed out because this will create the bloom and the glow that you will normally see on a reflective metallic surface this will not happen that much over here because this is a non-metallic maybe this is a plastic surface so we will keep it restricted to the metallic surface only we can add it over here also you can spend as much time as you want to make things look perfect now with that done we'll quickly add the shadows so i have created a shadow map so that you can better understand so these are the areas that will catch the shadows and shadows is easier than painting the lights because shadows will appear only on the region where the light is blocked like the light is coming from the top right it hits this metal notch over here so the immediate shadow will be right here over this blue marked region so let's create the shadows for shadows i prefer using an exposure layer to do that Go to new adjustment layer icon, select exposure from here, take it down depending on your composition. I will keep it to maybe 3, this is fine, 3.33. I'll select the layer mask and press Ctrl I or Command I on the keyboard to fill it with black and we'll start painting. Make sure the same brush is selected. It's a soft round brush with reduced pressure opacity, foreground color is white and let's start painting make sure you are paying attention to the angle of light like the light is coming like this so you do not want your shadow to be appear something like this because that will be off it should be according to the direction so it will be somewhere like this so i'll again undo everything and start painting These small areas should also catch a shadow and again like the highlights the more attention you pay to the details the more realistic and natural it will look. We'll have an immediate shadow over here as well. We'll also have shadow over here because this part is facing in the opposite direction as our lights. So let's paint our shadow. I think I missed some highlight over here. Let's add some. You can adjust the intensity just by controlling the exposure layer like that. 
I think I'll keep it like this. So here we have added our highlights and shadows and you can see the difference it makes. It looks dramatically different from what we started with, right? But to take things further, I have added this. I have added these crystals and this will act as a second source of light and I will show you how a different light source will react to our composition. We need to first determine the region where the light will shine on our object. Since this is a very smaller light source, so our highlights will be limited to a shorter area. I have also created a light map to demonstrate you better. This part of the subject is facing the light. So more or less, this is the area where we'll be painting our highlights. So with this in mind, let's create another solid color layer. Just on top of the orange layers, let's go to the new adjustment layer and select a solid color. And since our crystals are giving off a green light, we should also select a green highlight. Let's take a darker shade just like before and we'll select OK. Let's change the blending mode to linear dodge as before and we'll also clip it to the subject and also we'll play with the blend if section. Let's right click and select blending options and over here in this underlying layer section of blend if we'll hold alt or option on the keyboard and split this black slider and drag it to the right and you can see that it's revealing some of the darker details from the underlying layer and this will again help in adding realism to our highlights. Let's click OK. Let's select the layer mask and press Ctrl I or Command I on the keyboard to hide everything. And let's take our magic brush, make sure it's soft and round with reduced opacity and flow. White color is selected and let's start painting. I'll quickly block off parts of this region where the highlight should be. And if I overpaint any region, I'll paint with black to hide those unwanted areas. And the more up it goes, the fainter it will be. I'll paint it pretty faintly over here. Alright, if it looks good, let's duplicate it just like before. I'm right clicking and select duplicate layer. And we'll change the blending mode to screen to reduce the intensity a bit. Now if it's again too harsh, you can always play with the fill to reduce it down. Now we're missing some highlights on our crown. Let's quickly duplicate this color fill layers and add some highlights on our crown. I'm holding shift on my keyboard and selecting two of these layers and then I'm holding alt or option on the keyboard and dragging them on top of everything to paint our crown highlight. Now these have previously painted areas, so I'll select the layer mask and then with my foreground color selected as black, I'll press alt and backspace on the keyboard to fill them with black. Now I'm again selecting color white, selecting my brush and I'll paint off some highlights over here on the ground. Well, I think I missed some shadows just underneath this subject. So I'll select the exposure layer and paint some shadow over here on the ground. Okay, so that's it pretty much. And to spice things up, I added a little bit of particles to our composition. So this is without the highlights. And this is with the highlights and the shadows. Now I have a little bit of exercise for you. So I have this PSD which you can download at the link you can find in the description section. It has all these layers for you and will also have this practice group where you can add the color layers and try the highlights on your own. You also have the crystals if you want to add that additional source of light and you also have the finished composition if you want to refer to it at any point of time. You also have the light maps to guide you like I showed you earlier. 
You can also show me your finished artwork by posting it to Instagram and tag me with Let's End Create. I'll be happy to see what you create. So I hope you got some tips on how to add highlights and shadows to your artworks and I hope this helped you in some way. If so, please feel free to subscribe to my channel so that it can help me create more videos like this. Well then, I'll see you in my next video and till then, enjoy creating.